Good morning, everyone. I hope that everybody's doing great this morning. I am super, super excited to talk to everybody about this topic. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. Um, my presentation is called Cultivating the Investigative Mindset, and we're gonna talk about improving our critical thinking skills um, to start or further a career in cybersecurity. Um, this is something that's super near and dear to my heart. Um, I have a weird, crazy background that I'm gonna discuss a little bit, and um, that just kind of helped me to, you know, become, um, you know, somebody that can actually talk about critical thinking. So first and foremost, um, you know, who am I? Um, I'm a mom, I have two boys, uh, 20 and two, and that is not a typo or a um, miss, you know, uh, spoke. I have a 20 year old and a two year old. You can see my two year old here. Um, he is definitely my little critical thinker in my in my house. We call him Bubs. And um, so other than Bubs, what qualifies me to talk about this? Well, um, I, have kind of a mod podge of training and experience. Um, I started off uh, as a police officer and police detective. Um, I have degrees in applied psychology and masters in forensics. Um, I kind of, I started as a police officer. I became a detective. Um, I did that for 11 years. I investigated special victims crimes. And um, I did a dual role of being a regular investigator as well as a computer forensics investigator. So um, the types of crimes that I investigated was all the, the stuff nobody likes to ever talk about. I did um, like sex crimes, child abuse, child death, those kind of stuff. Um, and then I got into doing online exploitation. And that's kind of what led me into the computer forensics field which then led me into um, network forensics and, and cybersecurity. So um, I think it's important that like, you know, it everything people to understand, like everything is an investigation, right? Whether you're trying to get into red teaming or blue teaming, everything in cybersecurity really is an investigation. And so we're gonna come back to this, but it's just, that's such an important thing to think of is that all of what we're doing and what we're trying to do, whether we're, it doesn't matter what we're doing when we're problem solving, um, we're trying to figure out, you know, our ways are think critically to get the job done the best way possible. Um, every investigation or job can be, you know, like half-assed and still completed, or, you know, we can complete it well. Um, I threw up just a little bit of my my um, educational background. I mentioned I have um, I have a degree in applied psychology. Um, I was trained by the Secret Service in forensics, and then I have a master's degree from the University of Florida um, in uh, digital forensics. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well. Hi, Ursula. I'm yes. so sorry to interrupt you. Um, currently, or originally, we were sharing your screen beautifully and we saw everything, but now it's a, just a white slide and I don't imagine that that is intended. Interesting. I see it says paused. Nothing's coming up? No. I don't, maybe I clicked something. Hold on, let's try. I, I so sh It's a sharing and pause. Hold on, let's click on. The things, let's see if we can unpause it. How about, can you like stop sharing my screen and then reshare? Like, can you take presenter away from me and then give it back? That is a great idea. Let's see if we can do that. One would think it would be super simple. <laughs> Oh, whoops. So now I've killed your camera, but I haven't killed your presenter. So. so let's see. What is this here? How about now? Well, there we go. Now I can see your lovely face once again. Okay. And can you, are you able we to no longer see the white screen? So that's good. Oh, but now I see you're sharing, but unfortunately it is. The is it still white? white screen. Yeah. Gosh. Okay. How about let's do this. I'm just going to share my background. Um, let me figure out where the sharing, how I share. And by the way, everyone, we are so sorry about this. Thank you for your patience. Okay, I'm gonna stop showing the screen. Now I'm gonna show. All right, well. Yep, PowerPoint. What about now? Yes, beautiful. What is critical thinking? 
Awesome. Okay. okay. And what are we? Okay. I'm shutting right. up. Now. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. So, um, all right. So what are we going to talk about? Um, we're going to talk about what an investigative mindset is. Um, we're going to talk about, hold on, tell me if you, can you still, everything's there? Oh, I'm trying to pull up my notes in the back. Okay. That's what's happening. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being so patient. I know how irritating this can be sometimes. Um, I think this uh, this new way of learning is, is still got a curve for some of us. Okay, so what are we going to learn? Um, we're going to talk about what an investigative mindset is. We're going to talk about how it's useful, whether you are just trying to get into cybersecurity or even IT in general, or if you're still, like if you're currently in, in cyber or you're an IT person and you want to increase your skills to move into, you know, a, um, you know, a different cyber role or, um, you know, that uses different technical abilities or whatever. We're going to talk about like the fundamental components of critical thinking. And then we're going to talk about like applicable ways that we can actually like actionable ways that we can um, increase our critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? I'm not going to read this to you guys. Um, I do think this is a great description of what critical thinking is. Um, it's a little wordy. And so we're going to break this down, right? This is a great, but you know, words like synthesizing and like we're going to we're going to break this down to make it just a little bit easier. All right. So when we're talking about critical thinking or an investigative mindset, the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out where we're going. What are we trying to figure out? So, you know, we have a problem and we're trying to figure out a solution to it. So the first thing we need to do is kind of figure out, like, what's our end game? What are we trying to do here? Um, investigations are multifaceted, which means that they're challenges that are going to quite require different approaches to each situation. And so we have to learn to kind of think outside the box and think around that. Um, I just love this quote. Um, it's critical thinking is just deliberately and systematically processing information so that we can make better decisions. That I think is key, right? What are we doing here? A lot of the stuff that we're going to do in cybersecurity is, you know, we're, we're trying to fix a problem and then we need to make a decision on what we're going to do and, and how to best fix that problem. Um, so we have a couple of different types of thinking that I want to talk about first. So everybody has, has a way that they think that our brains are all different. So no approach is going to be the same for every person, right? So we've got these, we've got these, um, three ways of thinking. The two main ways is divergent thinking, um, which uses your imagination. And you can think of this as like, um, you're looking at all the possibilities of a, a problem, how like all the different possibilities of how we can approach that problem. Convergent thinking is when we use facts and figures and to to find a solution for that problem. And lateral thinking is what we're gonna work mostly on today, which is thinking outside the box. Um, and it's it's using both divergent thinking and convergent thinking. So you're probably sitting there thinking like, I already know which one I am, right? Um, a lot of us, I think in this, in this realm are convergent thinkers where we use logic and we use numbers and we use, if you hear my, my little bubs in the background, <laughs> um, I apologize. Um, he's, he, he likes to, to scream and yell and talk. But so a lot of us are convergent thinkers and and it's hard sometimes to increase our divergent thinking. Um, like anything else, right, like a muscle, um, the more that you do something, the better are that you're going to be at it. And so um, if you are a convergent thinker, but you want to better think laterally, um, then we're going to try and increase your divergent thinking. And we're going to talk about ways to do that. Um, so, you know, first and foremost, the thing we need to figure out and realizes that we always have to think outside the box. Um, and here you see my little bubs starting in the box and he's getting out of the box because he knows that as well. Always look in different directions. So we're gonna talk about some of the fundamental components of critical thinking. Um, so first thing that we wanna do is we wanna identify the problem. We need to understand all the sides of a problem in order for us to best figure out how to fix that problem, right? That makes sense. Um, so, and sometimes you may know just a little bit of the problem. You don't necessarily need to know 
all of it, right? We just need to know what we need to do, know for our portion of it. Um, and we're gonna talk about different ways that you know we're gonna get through each of these. Um, second component is gathering information. So what are we doing here? We're asking questions. We may not know how our Exchange server works because Everything is, is configured differently at every place, right? So, and you might work in the SOC and have no need to know every single component of how your Exchange server works, but you need to know enough so that you know what you need to do in order to mitigate like a phishing threat. Um, so gathering information about whatever the problem is or whatever, um, it may not be a problem necessarily, it may just be that we have a, a, a target um, that we're trying to get done, right? And it could be if you're if you're wanting to get into red teaming, it could just be that you're trying to figure out how are we going to, you know, breach this network? How are we going to get in over here? And like I found something that might work, but um, you know, you're so you're you're gathering as much information as you can about whatever we're going to call it a problem for now, but whatever your problem is that you're trying to um, that you're trying to solve. Um, we wanna evaluate the evidence. So gathering information isn't just asking questions, it's also gathering any logs, it's gathering you know, any physical evidence that we can use as well as non-physical evidence. So we're trying to just kind of, and then once we gather all of that, we need to evaluate it, we need to look through it, we need to decide, um, you know, like what evidence is going to be relevant, um, what's not gonna be relevant, and we wanna see what is it showing us. Once we've been able to wrap our head around the problem and then we get all our information together, um, evaluate what we have, right? And then, and some of these things are happening, you know, they're overlapping and they're happening in conjunction with, with one another. You're not just gonna gather your information and not look at it until you're like, okay, now the next step. It doesn't work like that, right? We, we're gonna do all of these things blended together. Um, as you're gathering the information and as you're evaluating the evidence, you're considering solutions, you're considering what's going on and what the actual, you know, issues here may be. And that's kind of part of that divergent thinking that we talked about. About, which is you are coming up with all of the different possibilities that may be and so we want to make sure like as we're going through these we're considering all of our possibilities don't ever think or consider that like you're right at any point I like to say always can always think that you're missing something um, because that's how we're going to make sure that we cover everything and get the most complete job done Lastly, we're gonna choose and implement. So we're gonna choose our solutions that we think best fit um, the problem or issue at hand. So that might be, you know, pulling emails from people's boxes and blocking email addresses that once we realize that we have an actual malicious email coming in, um, there may be, you know, we may need to do something that's more drastic or less drastic. So it really just depends, you know, on, um, on what's going on. Like, if we have phishing emails coming in from say a Gmail account, we may not want to block all of Gmail. I mean, you might want to if you're working in a SOC because it can be um, irritating, but yeah, we're not gonna do that. So we've got some different sources that we're gonna get this information from. Observation. Observation is huge and learning to, um, to be very observant and learning to, um, uh, find the fine details is a skill that I believe is critical when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, and, and really, I would say in IT in general, it because the when you can hone in on the fine details, you're going to figure out either what you missed um, or, you know, like the little things that you that you pick out. Sometimes those little teeny tiny things are the things that are able to completely open up a problem for you that you're able to figure out now what our next steps need to be. Experience. Um, you know, I I say experience is huge because you're going to be like, oh, there was that one time that this happened. And let me see if this applies here in this situation. And that's the key is let me see. It's, it's that old adage of trust, but verify, right? We want to make sure that no matter um, what 
conclusions we come to just because everything looks like that's it it probably is it in my experience it's it's when everything if it looks like a duck and acts like a duck it's probably a duck um but it, if it meows at you you might want to reevaluate what you were what you were thinking um which comes back to reflection so we want to reflect back on on everything that we've gathered and everything we've evaluated and we want to reflect we don't want to make super quick decisions there's almost nothing in cybersecurity that is like it needs to be done right this second we always have five minutes ten minutes even an hour because you know as as long as we are doing as much as we can, um, there's always time for a little bit of reflection before you say, pull all of the sent emails out of your CEO's inbox, right? Reasoning, that kind of goes in the same thing, right? We wanna make sure that we're making sound decisions. And sometimes these things, you should be um, bouncing ideas off of your coworkers because they're going to have different experiences than you do. And, you know, cybersecurity is so vast. And when I got into it, I was, I was intimidated by the amount of knowledge that is out there that I don't know. Right. Like, and so, and there's going to be lots that you don't know and that's okay. And that's normal. Um, you're going to meet people who have been doing this, this like computers, it programming cyber for the last 20 years. Those people have a mountain of experience. Um, but what I've also noticed is that people who have 20 years of experience, sometimes you might get an intern in who's still working on their on their bachelor's degree and they come in and they go have you thought about this and your brain blows up and you go oh my gosh I didn't even think about that so everybody's experience is valid and valuable um, communication obviously is key like I was mentioning talk to people um, and and I even say like for communication not only when you're thinking through problems but it's really good to make sure you communicate well with the people that are around you so I kind of mentioned the exchange server people as a SOC analyst I did, kind of forgot to mention that um, earlier I was a SOC analyst when I first got into um, into cybersecurity and I made friends with everybody because you never know who you're going to need when the when the stuff hits the fan right and so it's been super valuable to me to go and meet those people. And then when I have time and I'm just working on something and something pops in my head, I can pick their brains and say, hey, I'm curious, how does this work? And how does, you know, how does DNS with our exchange server work? And, and understanding how those things works helps you understand how things break and then how you can fix them. So some concepts that are really important, don't like, don't take anything at face value. Do not absolutely assume that like what you see is what you get because, you know, sometimes things just, they just aren't what they, what they seem at first. So that's that trust, but motive, but um, trust, but verify that concept that I mentioned. Um, so the next thing is we want to consider motive. Like, you know, when we, when we consider the motive of, what's going on and like, what is this, um, what is this threat actor trying to do? Or what am I trying to do as a red team? Or what am I looking for? What am I, you know, it's not just about getting in, it's about getting around. And so what is it that we're looking for? What is it that we're trying to accomplish? Um, I cannot stress enough research that goes back to asking questions and don't forget that Google is your friend. Half of cybersecurity is, is, is honestly figuring out the right Google search terms, right? If I'm looking for one thing, I might search it and not find the answer. But if I Google it a different way, I might find the answer. We're in such an awesome place right now where most people have probably had whatever problem you're having. They have probably come up with a solution from a, some other person. So, so um, yeah, definitely don't discount anything. Don't think, oh, well, I didn't, because I can't tell you how many times I think, oh, I didn't even think to search that. Um, ask questions. You don't need to know all parts of the infrastructure to determine what to do in a phishing email case, right? But we do need to understand the key components. So ask questions to wrap your brain around what is actually happening here. Understand the ins and outs of what is important in your situation. Um, 
so like I mentioned, I mentioned, I keep mentioning the exchange server just because I worked with them a lot, but um, so yeah, make sure that we're asking a ton of questions. Don't assume anything. So I mentioned earlier, like, just don't assume you're right, but you know what? Don't assume anything. There's a reason that my bubs that we saw earlier checks the child locks on everything in the kitchen a couple of times a day. Um, it's because sometimes I leave it open, right? And he knows that like, it's not always going to be the same every single time. Um, configurations change. You may not know it because you might not be part of that team that changed something. Um, you know, we may have left some port open that used to be closed. And so don't assume that just because something was the way that it was before, that that it is that way now. And this, you know, I'm going to go back real quick to the don't assume. This gets seasoned people sometimes too. So don't think that like, oh, I messed that up like because I made this assumption. Like that gets everybody. Um, break it down into bite-sized manageable pieces, um, especially if the problem is large and multifaceted. Like if you think like APT or advanced, persis advanced persistent threat actors, um, if you think they're in your network, this isn't going to be like a one hour type of case where we bing, bang, boom, and now APT is out of our network. No, that's going to be super, multi super multifaceted. You're going to be using different departments. You may be calling in different agencies to assist you with IR, but whatever it is, it's not going to be a one-day affair. And you're going to need to break everything down into, you know, manageable pieces. Try to keep it simple. Make sure that whatever your problem is, you just Again, you're breaking it down. You're making, you're simplifying things. Um, what I do currently, I, I am a threat research analyst with uh, Mandiant Security Validation, and it was formerly Veridin for those who are familiar with Veridin. And what we do is we break down like TTPs or techniques, ta tactics, techniques, and procedures um, into their like basic form and their basic behaviors, and we use those in our platform. Keeping it simple is so important to make sure that you're not missing any part of the puzzle. And then again, reevaluate. As I mentioned before, don't assume you're right. Let the evidence tell you what's going on and where you need to go next. Try not to get ahead of yourself and always, always, always reevaluate your findings before you make decisions you might regret. If you're about to make a decision to do something pretty intense like you know pulling a ton of emails from from people or blocking an entire email domain sometimes you have to do that sometimes that is the answer but before you go doing major things you want to make sure that everything else aligns maybe talk to some people all right so we're going to talk about some applicable ways that we can increase our skills Okay, so I know that this one may seem silly and, and seem super basic, but reading. So this is like the most obvious, right, um, of increasing our knowledge. But what you may not know is that reading actually increases your brain power. Um, so because reading requires critical thinking, you have to observe the words, you're interpreting the words, you're evaluating them for meaning, you're assigning a meaning to them. And, and personally, what I like to do is I like to combine books and videos. So I am, I'm a pretty visual learner. But what I find is, is that books makes my brain work a little bit different way. And so I try to combine the two um, where I will, I will watch a video and then read or vice versa. Usually I watch the video first, then I read and reading it really will solidify those concepts in my mind. Practice thinking on your feet. I think this is such a cool skill that people need to try. So essentially what you do is you create like a short presentation on a topic that you find interesting. Um, make it interesting because if you don't find it interesting, nobody else will. So you want to find a trusted friend or a colleague to be your audience and you want to ask them to post questions to you and challenge your facts or ideas. What this, what this does is this helps you to work on that kind of, you know, um, coming up with quick ideas and quick answers as you're standing there in front of somebody. This is great for like, you know, when you have to answer to a C-level about something going on in your network. <clears throat> And if you're the type of person who flusters easily and you have, but you're smart, you have the answer in your brain, but you can't get it out of your mouth quick enough because you get flustered. Um, 
then thinking, practicing thinking on your feet is actually going to help you with that. So presenting ideas and information at meetups, um, right now we're virtual, which is so awesome. You can go to meetups anywhere in the world, right? Um, I went to Dallas Hackers a um, few weeks back and like I've been wanting to meet those guys. And so I got to, you know, attend a meetup with them. Um, a lot of meetups like Dallas Hackers, they they require somebody like they want you to to present ideas and it's for this kind of thing um the more ideas that you present the better off that you're going to um you're going to be i know that we're getting really close so i'm going to kind of zoom through the next couple of things and i'm going to be in the discord um fully available for any questions that you guys might have afterwards so Ursula, joining public yes I am so sorry. We actually need to call it right here. I, I'm okay. so, so sorry. I've been trying to like, okay. I'm trying to ride this as perfect. Um, thank you. I, I, I no love what you were saying. And thank you for being in the Discord. Like, we'd love to have you there because I know people are following this and very, very interested in the content you have. And we also have a channel where you can post the slides if you feel comfortable perfect. doing that so everybody I, else can see more of the content. I will, I will post the slides, you guys, and I'll be over in Discord. Thanks and everybody quick, who joined us. Quick yeah. shout out. Is there any way that people can get a hold of you at outside of Discord that you want to share? Yep, absolutely. Let me just get us to the end. And you can hit, hit me up um Ursula.cowan at fireeye.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at Ush1C. And um, I do try to respond to all of my messages there. So anybody can can get me at either one of those two locations. Brilliant. Thank you again, Ursula. And don't worry about having to close anything. I'll take care of it all for you. Okay. Thanks, you guys.